Hi guys. Um, gosh, this only shows 23 seconds. I hope that's not my storage, but I have to go to work and I've been wanting to make a video. And so I'm just going to read. I don't even know where to start. It seems like every morning I get up and, um, the Lord just gives me so much to say, and then by the time I get around to it, something happens in my day, and I can't make a video. You know, I give you these short 60-second videos, um, but I'd like to give you what has been happening with me and why I think the rapture is so close. And I want to say the month of March um, for a couple of reasons, you know, I heard a dar a uh, couple months ago, right before I woke up. I heard a dar, a dar, a dar, you know, and I think that's uh, it represented Queen Esther in the time, you know, the Purim in the spring, and um, just things like that. And this morning when I was writing, yeah, you know, I've been studying about John the Baptist. And um, I started writing in my Bible, and I just got back home, and I can't find it. It's driving me silly. But I, I started writing. I mean, I'm always jotting down things in here. But um, as soon as I wrote it, I, I was filled with, like, like tears on the inside. And um, I don't know, maybe I, I'm sure many of you brothers and sisters know that, but it was important and what it said is that we were all, not all of us, but there are many like John the Baptist making a way for the Lord. And and why I want to say that, why I think that we are close to the rapture is because everything in Matthew 24, Luke 21, obviously, um, we know has happened and been fulfilled. And I just, you know, 2025, it, I just, I can't see it Um in 2020, I know that it was the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, God, because I was spreading the gospel on Facebook before I met anybody on YouTube, before I met my brothers and sisters in Christ, who I love a lot. And um, I remember having the feeling like I have to I have to make a way for the Lord. I have to. There's so many people that don't know what the rapture is, and this was in 2020. And... Um, And now we have gotten to the point where, you know, this gospel has been preached amongst all the nations and all the world. So I really think that is being fulfilled. Everybody knows what the rapture is, whether they've mocked it or it has made them repent and believe in the gospel um, and seek the Lord. So it's where I stand. Um, I'm just really excited. I, I, you know, birth pains don't go backwards and, and we all feel it in our soul and we're all just kind of hibernating right now. I feel like waiting for Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, um, to reveal himself. And, um, instead of me talking, you know, I've been afraid to make videos because I can't edit them and, when I watch them again, um, I notice sometimes I say something wrong, and I don't want to do that for the Lord. But I just, I'm just going to read things that I've jotted down and read the word of the Lord. Um, okay. It says, there is, my daughter got me this book, and, she, and I thought it was so sweet. She got it for me. It's like a journal. At Christmas time, she said, Mom, I got you this because I know you like to write in the Bible. And I thought, you know, it melted my heart that she noticed that I write in the Bible and, and that she thought of God and she thought of me. So I wrote in it. Um, and I said, it says, there is a remnant, a bride on a narrow path. They are beautiful standing at the gate called beautiful Jesus. They get up every morning with Jesus on their mind. They don't only follow him, they sometimes run to him. They help people every day, interact and fellowship. They are empathetic, kind and caring. Their eyes and hearts see and feel the suffering. Um, and they give it to God. They fear God 
and work their salvation out with fear and trembling. They stand at their watch post while the world and their families and towns are not paying attention. They pray is an understatement. They almost sweat blood. Um, they are grandmas, they are mothers and kiddos, yet warriors, praying for those who don't believe. They understand principalities and demons and fight them often, asking Jesus to rebuke them. They keep their eyes on Jesus every day, 365 days a year, from the moment they got saved. Um, and then, you know, I was trying to, I made a little graph here. Uh, I don't know, that circle right there. And I was trying to explain the remnant, like imagine a big circle, you know, and, and those are people that call themselves Christians. And, uh, you know, but they have idols and they have, and, and I put the Pope in there and the, there's laws and rules and rituals and superstitions still at work in their lives that keep them from fully submitting to Christ. You know, um, they know of Jesus, but they don't know Jesus personally. Um, they have itchy ears and, and, um, the, the, they they run to the prosperity gospel, you know, it's all about love. And But then I, I put a little heart here because that is the remnant um, of true believers, the Church of Philadelphia, uh, the Chosen, the Bride of Christ. Um, and these are, are those that I believe go in the rapture uh, that's been doing God's will and spreading the gospel and making disciples and making a way like John the Baptist. Um, they abide in his words. Um, they, they speak and understand prophecy as much as the Lord gives. Uh, they believe in the blood. Um, they preach Christ crucified, you know. Uh, and, um, and then outside of the circle, I wrote um, other religions, you know, that are in the far left, you know, that just not even near, you know, um, understanding the Lord, um, like other religions, the fact that there's no mother earth, you know, you, you can't, everything in this, in this, on this earth come from the Lord. You know, you thank God for the trees and the nature and you don't worship it. You know, I, you keep your mind, um, on heavenly things and, you preach the kingdom of heaven. You know, Jesus came to to let um, every human know that there is a kingdom. Um, and outside of this circle is like the new age, you know, um, worldly, and they chase money and, and witchcraft and, and, and just the abominations and the adulteries in this world um, and all the false teachers. And, um, okay, before I keep on going on what I wrote, I just, I don't know how long I have on my phone and I have to go to work. And so I'm just going to read out of God's word because God's word is powerful. It is power. Um, it says, why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. And even this isn't, this is an ax, um, you know, that that's like the rulers of this world right now, the, the principalities, the rulers of darkness. Um, and for the unbelievers, if you can't see that, you know, the, the WEF and, and all, all the governments, King Charles, the new one world religion, um, that explains it. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It, it's happening right now. If you can't see that, um, I pray that you do. And uh, it says, and today I circled this, um, 
it was after that scripture. It says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon will be turned to blood before the coming and of the great glorious day of the lord and everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved um I thought this was important. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among, among you through him. As yourselves know, this man was handed over to you by God, God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And then I, I wrote on the side, it said, God is all-knowing, past, present, and future. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Um, that's out of Acts. Um, I'm sorry, I just... Every day the Lord, you know, I abide in his word and, and, and I feel like he gives me so much to say and, and I just kind of keep it to myself and I, I just don't want to hold it to myself <laughs> this is the problem. Um, you know, this is, I was learning about John the Baptist here and it was so beautiful to me because God's word is alive and it hit me, you know, you're always learning things, even though I've read this a ton of times, it says, when they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child, he was asked for a writing tablet. And to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed and he began to speak. So right there, I stopped and I kind of froze because I haven't been able to, like, I, I've been just very shy and, and I, I'll admit a little nervous to um, speak. <laughs> but anyways, it, it just hit me. Uh, I thought, oh my goodness, John the Baptist's father couldn't speak for nine months. And um, it made me think, you know, just me being a woman and, and having two children, I, I just thought of what it was like for Elizabeth here um, in her old age, having a, a baby and her own husband couldn't speak. And I just thought it was amazing. So before John the Baptist was even born, there was miracles involved that he was taught about and knew about. And um, one of them being that his father saw an angel and he couldn't speak. And then I thought it was neat right after that, right after John was born, what did he do Zachariah saying? Which, you know, could you imagine not speaking for nine months and then you don't only speak, but you sing, you know? And, um, and so Here's Zechariah's song. It, it says, His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and has redeemed his people. Um, he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through the holy prophets long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all those who hate us to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare a way for him, 
to give his people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. Those are lyrics. That's pretty awesome. Um, okay, I just want to keep reading God's word because it, it is God's word. People who speak God's word, it's in John 3 uh, at the end of it. Uh, let me just see if it, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John 3. John 3, okay. John the Baptist's testimony of Jesus. Um, For God so loved the world that he gave his own one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned but whoever does not believe in him believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of the light because of their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Um, You yourselves can testify that I am not the Christ, but I am the one sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom awaits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice, the Holy Spirit. The joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater and I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. The man who has accepted it has certified that God is truthful for the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God. There it is. John 3, 33, somewhere in there. Um, so that's kind of how you know of, you know, if if they're speaking the words of God, um, the words that God had taught them. Um, mystery mysteries. Paul's labor for the church. Now I rejoice in what was suffered for you, and I fill up my flesh. I fill up in my flesh what is lacking in regards to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, um, which is the church. I have become its servant. By the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages, the gener and ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the saints. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of the mystery, which is Christ in you the hope of glory. We proclaim him admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. To this end, I labor, struggling with all his energy, which so powerfully works in me. Um. It's 
weird. I had so much to say, and now I, I'm just, uh, The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who was born of God will continue in sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God nor is anyone who does not love his brother, or nor is anyone who does not love his brother. Love one another. Um, these are all not scriptures that I read this morning, but um, I just want to read them. Okay, uh, the man of lawlessness. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letter supposed to have come to us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in that way, for the day of the Lord will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction, he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming that to be God himself to be God. So that is the Antichrist. Um, don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is holding him back. 